Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how you can build a custom form in Framer and then submit the data to an external API. So for this example we're going to be using our Framer form component which is a free and open source form component for Framer with support for input types like select, text area, um, number and email. So if you go to the website, which is framer.components.io, you can click the open in Framer button and this will open up the remix for you. When you select the form, on the right hand side, you'll see the configuration options. So you can enter the URL. This, for example, could be a FormSpark um, endpoint URL um, or an alpha URL, which we'll be using in this video. You can set the method. Um, this is mainly for if you're connecting to a no code back end um, and you may want to for example do a get request if you're creating like a, a search input but for most scenarios you'll just want to leave it as post next we've got the content type and then the inputs so here you can add new inputs to the form and you can also customize existing inputs so you can enter the name the label the placeholder text the type of input so we've got text, number, email, text area, select and checkbox. You can also set whether it's required or not. And if you're using multiple columns, like we are in this example, we've got a two column layout. You can set how many columns um, the input field spans. So for this example, the name and last name are one column, but the email service message and subscribe all span two columns. Next, we've got the button. So here you can change the text and whether to show it or not. And then you've got the on success events. So for this example, we'll leave it as open link and we'll just redirect to a thank you page, but you could change it to show overlay. Just don't forget um, to scroll to the top and add an overlay to the form. And then finally, we've got the styles. So here you can style the form, the labels, and you can change the font, the fill, the text, padding, radius, border, shadow. Um, we've tried to implement all of the features within Framer's native input component. Um, and this component is actually based on the input component by Framer. Next, we've got the input styles. So we've got all of the ones I just mentioned, plus um, like focus, border, and shadow. And then finally, we've got the button. So right now it's set to stretch, but you could also um, align it at the, the beginning, uh, the end, center it, um, but we'll set it to stretch. So for this example, I'm going to use the default input fields here. And what we're going to do is submit this data to Airtable. So if I go into Airtable, here you can see I've got my base. Um, it's called Frame a Demo, and we've got a table called Submissions. We've got an email column, first name, last name, service, message, and subscribe. So this is a field for each field in our form. The names don't need to match. Um, but yeah, got that set up. So the next thing we're going to want to do is build our API flow. Now you can't send data directly from this form to Airtable because you will expose your API key, which is something you should never do. So we're going to use Alfie for this example, which is our no code API builder. So I'm going to build a flow called Framer Demo. We're going to set the method to post as it's a form. And we're going to click create. So now we've got a blank canvas. The first thing you're going to want to do is just run the flow and this will automatically configure the input parameters. So if we go to publish, here we can copy the development endpoint URL to the clipboard. So we'll copy that, go over to Framer and we'll paste it in the URL field of our form. Next we'll click play within Framer and we'll just enter some details. select a service and a message. And it's always a good idea when you're first configuring the flow to send all of the fields. So then Alfie is aware of all of the fields because things like checkboxes, for example, when they're not checked in a form, they aren't included in the request. So we'll click submit. We can see we were redirected to the success page. And if we go into Alfie now, um, we've got a pop-up um, informing us that it's detected new fields. So we can see all of the fields in our form um, so we've got the first name, last name, email, service, message, and subscribe. We've got the type, so these are all in the body, and then the data type as well. So I'm just going to add all of these. And then if you click settings, 
here you can see all of the fields here. So by default, they don't have a default value and they aren't set to required. Um, so if you do want to set the fields to required um, server side, then you can check that here. And you can also add new fields. But that's everything we need to do with respect to that. So the next thing we want to do is send that data to Airtable. So if we add a new node and we search for Airtable, we're looking for create record. Let's give this an ID, let's call it save. This will come in handy later when we're referencing data returned from this call. Then we need to select a connection. So if you haven't, um, if you're new to Alpha and you haven't already configured a connection, you can do that um, over here on the left hand side. You can click add integration. And if you're connecting to Airtable, we don't recommend using the API key. Um, Airtable themselves actually recommend connecting via the new um, OAuth flow. So you can select OAuth and run through that. I'm not going to run through that now. Instead, I'm going to select a connection I've already configured called Airtable Demo. And then we'll select our base. So this is the Framer Demo base and our table is Submissions. And now you can see all of the fields being populated. So the next step is just to map these to the input parameters. So if we go to email, we can open requests, body, email, and we've got first name, last name, service, message, and subscribe. Excellent. So let's run the, the form again. So let's go back to the home page and fill the details out. Select design and hello. Let's submit this. Let's go back into Alfie. We can see the flow completed. We've got the green execution path. If we go into Airtable, we can see we've now got Jane's entry. So the last thing really to do is just to add some error handling and then publish our flow. So let's add a logic block. Let's add a rule. Let's check if the save node returned um, a success. So we can do that by going to nodes, um, find the node we want, in this instance, save, go to the metadata and select the status code. So we're going to check if the status code equals 200, which would indicate that the request was successful and the record was successfully added to Airtable. So I'll click save. And then we're not going to get into formatting response data for this video. We're just going to return the data returned. Um, so we'll just do success. And then let's do an error. Awesome. So now let's publish our flow. So, so far we've been working in development. But you'll see on the top left here, we've got a toggle where we can switch to the live environment. If I click that now, we'll get an error saying we must first publish the flow. So the development flow is built specifically for development and you can only run a development flow when it's open. So in this instance here, you can see it's open. So when I'm testing in Framer, it's working. If I was to close this tab and then test my Framer form, it, it would stop working. Um, because development isn't open and development should only be um, available when you're working on it. So to get ready for production, we'll go to publish, we'll deploy to production, then we can switch to live. And now you can see we're in the live environment. Now this is read only. So I can't drag these around. I can view the configuration, but I can't make any changes. If you want to make changes, then you go back to development, make a change, um, and then you publish. But if we go back to live, you can see this is a different flow now. So we've got two instances and this really um, prevents issues occurring um, on a production website. Um, if say you're making a change or you want to test adding a new field, you can do that safely in our development environment. But now we're in live and we've published, let's copy the live endpoint URL. Let's go back to Framer, go to our form and we could just change um, this to live, but let's just paste the whole URL. Let's click play and let's add a new record. So I'll add Joel. We'll select development 
and we'll do hello and we won't subscribe to the newsletter we'll click submit you can see we're redirected the flow executed successfully in Alfi. And if we go into Airtable, we can see our new record was added and the subscribe checkbox was not checked. So that's a, a quick run through um, of how you can create custom forms in Framer, how you can build custom APIs in Alpha using no code. Um, this is a, a really nice stack um, for those who are looking to build more complex applications or websites within Framer um, without having to, to learn how to code. Um, so if you've got any questions, feel free to reach out. Um, have a great day.